Hi there, this is Debbie Nicholson, the Director of Community Outreach, coming to you from Be Cancer. Uh, we are so excited to bring you education and information, and we hope that you will like our YouTube channel and leave a comment and get involved in the conversation because we're gonna have a great conversation today. Uh, we have with us one of our wonderful coaches. Her name's Jennifer, Jennifer Gale. Hi, Jennifer. Thank you so much for being with us. Hi, Debbie. Thanks so Hi much there. for being um, Jennifer is a traditional classical naturopathic doctor. She's certified through the American Naturopathic Medical Certification Board. She's also a functional diagnos diagnostic nutritional practitioner. Uh, she has a certification as a bioenergetics practitioner through NES. We're going to talk about that. And she's giving workshops currently in Southeast Michigan on all aspects of natural health. And um, her focus is on nutrition, herbs, organic gardening, essential oils, uh, reflexology we're going to talk about today, functional blood chemistry analysis, and she's using thermal imaging also. She's a thermo buzzer consultant, and I think thermo imaging is very important. So we're going to talk about that as well. So welcome, Jennifer. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here. We have lots of tools in the toolbox today we're going to talk about to help educate everyone. Yes. Uh, and I know that you were telling me that um, as your friends and colleagues and family members were being diagnosed with cancer, you were feeling like you didn't have the tools to help. You're left with that frustration and sadness and you really wanted to get involved. And as you became more educated, that started to fade and now you're very empowered helping others and you have devoted your life to this now. So uh, tell us um, your story, how you got into this, what your journey's been. Absolutely. Well, I got into natural health like so many other people that I was sick. And when I was in my early 20s, I developed asthma um, and had never really so did I. had it before. <laughs> yeah. <No>. And, <laughs> yeah. And um, after having that develop, I actually tried all the conventional routes. I, I went through every inhaler you could get at the time, and at the time you could get them over the counter. And so I would get the over the counter ones when those stopped working, then I went to the prescription ones. When those stopped working, I went to the actual breathing machine. And when that stopped working, I just found myself at a loss because it was years and years and years of hiding inhalers everywhere and I couldn't come and go. And the last straw for me was um, when I was actually on my way to do a performance. And so my first profession is as a pianist. And so I still work professionally as a pianist, but at the time I was, that was the bulk of really what I did. And so I was actually backstage and had my name called and wouldn't you know that was when an asthma attack <laughs> decided to set in and it was stressful and upsetting and at the time I had learned a tool that if I drank black coffee and bent over and touched my toes I could actually calm my asthma attack so thank god there happened to be a coffee pot down the hallway to kind of quell me before I went out on stage to perform but after that happened, I was like, you know, this can't, I can't continue like this. I have to figure out something. And so a chance read in a health food store that someone had cured their asthma with juicing was, you know, interesting. And I thought, well, you know, it, it can't hurt. So let me try it. So I went and bought a juicer and went and bought a bunch of fruit and vegetables. It wasn't organic, but I was just like, well, you know, let me just try this. And so I juiced for a couple times a day for about a week. And after the end of that week, I found that my breathing was starting to get easier. And my lungs felt a little bit better. And I thought, oh, there's something to this. I'm going to continue. So for the next year, I juiced and I used all sorts of combinations of things. And I started reading about why people were having asthma situations come up and of course I discovered food sensitivities and I discovered every time I ate dairy for some reason my breathing got tight and my lungs didn't feel so good 
And so I discovered that I had a food sensitivity with that. And at the time, I also um, discovered that I was carrying some sadness and there was some emotions connected in with that as well, some grief. And, you know, it was just certainly a time period of my life where I was unsure of my direction. And so it was just a lot of things that were culminating. And so after one year of kind of working through all these different aspects of diet and emotion or whatnot, one morning I woke up and I just knew it was over. I knew my asthma was gone. I just knew my lungs had healed. I knew whatever had passed was passed. And I got up that morning and I'll never forget, I went through my place and connected every, I collected every inhaler I could find. I, connect, I collected the breathing machine, <clears throat> put them all in a box and threw them in a garbage can. And that was it. And that was almost two decades ago. And I've never had another asthma attack since. Wow. And from that, I, you know, I, I knew something powerful had happened. I couldn't really explain what happened. I didn't really know the mechanism, but I knew that if I could um, take some time to do some study on what happened and then help other people do the same thing that I did, I was going to do that. And so I put it on the table, but it was always kind of waiting there. And so when I got to my 40s, I said, well, it's time to really investigate this. And so I looked into the different options of what you can do naturally, um, according to state and regulation and studies and on and on and on. And so I decided that classical naturopathic work is what I wanted to do. True to the charter, non-invasive, all natural, all natural modalities, that's what I wanted to do. And so it was pretty cool to discover that we have not one, but two brick and mortar naturopathic schools here in Michigan. So I did some research on them and um, decided that night the Naturopathic Institute would be my choice and it would be the best fit for me. And so I enrolled in naturopathic school and the world of natural health just opened up to me from there. I, you know, I've already, I've always been a research, sort of a resource kind of a person, but you know, starting in school, everything just, you know, exploded as far as you suddenly discover there's this whole world of information and you want to know everything right now. And so oh, yeah, the body's fascinating. Yes. That's and so I loved being in school. And then part of being in school was, of course, um, in the natural health world, of course, as you know, we don't really work by disease state. We really work by terrain. And so, of course, cancer would come up. But it really was always about terrain and how do we how do we fix people's constitution and terrain and so um, I had memories of the first person that I'd ever seen who had cancer that had passed away and those images always stuck with me and so when I was in naturopathic school one of the many things I wanted to kind of address was you know, how do I join this work of people supporting folks with cancer and how do we really help get to the root cause of why so many more cancer cases are, are among us and starting. And so that's for me where everything kind of started was my own health journey being sick. Conventional medicine didn't help me, but boy did natural health saved me and it opened up a whole world for me. And so in many ways, I'm kind of a evangelist or a soldier for natural health because there's just so much that we can do and handle ourselves. Yeah, because I mean, you can continue down the road of prescriptions and inhalers. Everything has side effects, and if you go that route, it does it doesn't end well, you know. <laughs> and instead, you connected to nature, the body's innate ability to heal when we give it what it needs. And Absolutely. yeah, you you get a little taste of that, and and you want to know more, <laughs> right? Absolutely. So, <laughs> yeah, there's so many neat things that you're doing. Uh, in your, you know, in treating people in your practice. And I would love to talk about some of the ones that you're passionate about. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I champion, you know, nutrition and herbs and infaceuticals and energy work and light and sound color therapy, reflexology. I, I mean, I, I champion all these things. And even if I don't do them, I champion modalities that I don't do because I understand how they work and how well they can work for people. Um, probably 
what I'm definitely most excited about is helping get people to the point of understanding a true mind, body, spirit connection through energy work. And so my work as a nest practitioner is probably one of the most exciting means of doing that. Um, but truthfully- What does NEST stand for? So NEST stands for um, Nutra Energetic Systems. And so it's really, it's really being able to understand the biofield. And so, as you know, the natural health world, we understand that we are truly energy. And so when we're able to kind of take apart the body field and understand it, when we can work with the body field, if we can make adjustments or balance the body field, the body field moves in and fixes the physical. And so what's so exciting about Ness is we're kind of taking what's old and what's kind of been known, but made it very modern, being able to map our body field with a simple, you know, 20 second scan that gives us 440 points, specific body field points that we can actually go in and we can address in the order the body wants to, in its order of what it considers it wants to work on first. And we can address that field using things called infaceuticals, which is just structured water, which I'm very, very excited and passionate about. But we can also use things like PEMF therapy, which is part of, we have a little PEMF device that we use as part of the NEST program. And so it's really, really exciting because with a three-step process, I can immediately help people start to rebalance and reformulate themselves, starting with their most powerful means of rebalancing is their energy field. And then when the energy field starts to understand there's some changes or distortions or things that need to be made, it can fix itself and that moves in to correct the physical. And it's so exciting I, on, on myself that I've used it, all my clients. And so, of course, like every you know natural practitioner, of course I want people to have great diet, need organic as much as possible. Of course, I want you to exercise and take herbs. Of course, all of that is true. But because we're that mind, body, spirit connection, boy, when we can really engage that portion of our healing, that's when things can really change. And so I'm just so excited about that, it. If people are looking like for that scan, do you have to be in front of the practitioner for that? Or can you do that distance? We can, you can do it remotely. And so I have a couple of different ways I work with clients. And so um, the bulk of people that I see are in my locality and then I work with them locally and I can do the scan with them locally. But I, there's also a remote scanner that people can buy. And if you buy the remote scanner, as long as you have computer access, you can actually do the scan remotely. And then I can chat with my clients remotely about their scan. And so it's really great. I don't need to be in the same physical locality as anyone to get them into the process. And so it's great because the infaceuticals are you know, something that you can also purchase and that they're on my website and then people who are part of the program can get them as well. And they're specifically tuned to what your scan says. And so it's, it's really, really exciting. I can't say enough about the program. I absolutely love it. Yeah, it's kind of a foundational thing, you know, because if you're doing absolutely. the other things and, and, you know, there's that underlying energetic disturbance, mm -hmm. I guess that that's yep. still kind of kind of be in the way. And that, absolutely. Is that usually emotionally based? Oh, abs absolutely. And okay. that's part of the reason why I like Ness so much is part one of the aspects of the specific scan points that we take a look at are emotional things that are hanging onto us. And as you know, I'm sure emotions hang in different parts of the body. They affect certain body systems, certain organs. And so emotions have the ability to disrupt and change our energy field. They can um, certainly affect our physical being, but where they really actually start is in our energy field. So, you know, we have to really, if we're gonna, if we're gonna really take a look at health and wellness and balance, we have to put emotions right up there at the top because they have the ability to change everything. Right, and we may not be totally aware of how much it's affecting us. 
Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And then, you know, it's kind of neat too, because you don't actually have to talk about it and for a year, you can yep. kind of, <laughs> and, and especially some people, uh, you know, genders, <laughs> you know, I, you know, men classically, and they've told me it, they're, it's not as, they're not as easily to talk about uh, their feelings and emotions because that in society just hasn't really allowed them to do that. So it's really great, I think. Um, and that's one of the things that I absolutely love about this NEST program is it kind of helps set the stage for people to have emotional release. And um, certainly once that release has started, then you hope that there's the appropriate support staff in place, whether it be, you know, an actual counselor or therapist or family or community or whatever may be in place to kind of help once that emotional release starts. And that's part of what I do kind of with my clientele. Cause I, you know, I'm certainly not a full, you know, therapist or counselor, but I'm very quick to suggest, well, let's put in place some other um, support staff that once these emotions and releases start to happen, let's make sure you have the support that you need because we don't want to, you know, have all this stuff released, and then you have no way to kind of process it and then move yourself to the next space. Yeah, I know grief counseling is another great tool, um, things like that. So yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah, so you're you're getting that mind, body, spirit part. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, and I find with cancer patients as well, and it's similar but you know of course this is all about you know a cancer as a program and so many social health field is there's usually an emotion or some sort of emotional situation underlying many cancer diagnoses and we studied that in naturopathic school with the old the german medicine and you know the conventional doctors who were doing very interesting things just curiously discovering that you know all their breast cancer patients would maybe have something happening with a partner or you know and so it wasn't coincidence after a while and so <laughs> we know that that's a that's a part of what may go into any cancer diagnosis so how empowering is it to be able to start out knowing that that may be there and then provide that support so then when you provide the other aspects of you know community and nutrition and you know changing your water or whatever it is the person may need how much more effective and long lasting is it for them it's it's just beautiful do you want to talk about the structured water also while we're on that Talk. Sure, sure. <laughs> so this is, um, Ness bases its infaceutical work off of the work of Dr. Gerald Pollack, who is kind of the main person who's studying structured water. And simple explanation is that there's an understanding that water has a fourth, fourth phase. So we know about, you know, vapor and ice and liquid, but there's actually a fourth phase that's kind of like a gel state. And what we know about that gel state is that gel state is really, it carries powerful information and it can really serve um, interesting, um, it can really serve as a healing mechanism just by the fact of water. And so I've always found it interesting that we know, for example, that Life doesn't exist on Mars or wherever else unless there's water. So we recognize it as a fundamental thing, but somehow it's been entirely bypassed as an important understanding for us with health. And so what's kind of cool with structured water is there's a format of water called infaceuticals. And we're able to take regular tap water and infuse it with, um, well, it's not regular tap water. It's a little bit above that, but we can take water that we've either distilled or um, worked with in some fashion, but we can instill water with frequencies of light and sound and energy. And when we do that, we know water can hold information and energy. And when we take that water into our bodies, it interacts with the water in our bodies and then can start to make change via our energy field. And so it's pretty exciting. Um, 
what the what's happening with the the research on structured water and the understanding of what we can do with it but i love that with the nest program i can be very specific i can give the exact infraceutical energetically to match what someone may be missing based on their exact scan so i love being able to kind of meld in what we've got going on natural health wise in the world and it's it's very exciting because it's it's really not new information but it's 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 a modern reinvention and rethinking of what we already kind of knew and so i think this is is great i've done a lot of reading about this they say it's similar to like when um in a stream when the water's bubbling over stones and rocks and it's gaining you know oxygen and movement and sunlight and it's like a living force you know so there's a structured water unit you can pass your water through yes to give it yes. that life it's like a life-giving yep. force Ab absolutely water is life and it's really an amazing thing to me that it's so simple <laughs> it's it's you know almost like too simple to that we don't even think it through. But I tell you, one of the things I'm so excited and interested about is um, Dr. Cowan's work on uh, cancer and structured water, because he wrote a fantastic book about how we're really thinking, we're not really asking the right questions in regard to cancer. And it really has much more to do with our state of our water, much more water within our body much more than genetics, much more than anything. And so I'm absolutely loving that because it dovetails perfectly with what the natural health world has said for thousands and thousands of years, that there are other factors, disease and imbalance set in place. Genetics are just, they're just kind of what, they're kind of, uh, you know, moving parts to keep the, the body going, but they're not, they're not really root cause. And so I'm loving that the two are dovetailing and we're really understanding the power of water. And I, I lecture a lot with a lot of seniors. And one of the things that is very common with most seniors is they're dehydrated. Mm -hmm. And it is an underlying cause of so much disease as we age. And it isn't even as we age, there's just people that are chronically dehydrated. But Especially if you think if about like it, coffee, it's simple right? Water's life, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, water is life. Yeah, I know. I mean, I know. I think water is very foundational too. Like, mm -hmm. and that ties into sunlight. I think water, sunlight, your circadian uh, biology, and things like that. I think, yeah, are really, really important to get those foundational things in. Uh, that that's very interesting. Yeah, mm -hmm. water and hydration are extremely important, and the quality yes. of your water. Absolutely. And I always suggest to my clients, you know, because so much of what people can do is based on your personal economics. And so it's hard to, you know, say to go get the most, you know, expensive thing. But I always tell everyone water is so important. Do whatever you can to your water, whatever your budget will allow. So maybe it's just going to be a, a, a water filter in your refrigerator. Maybe it will just be a shower filter. Maybe you can afford to have a whole house with an activated carbon unit, you know, whatever you can afford to do, do that with your water because it's just that important. Absolutely. And keep the water bottles and the plastic down, right? Absolutely. <laughs> There's just no need for all that. Much better to get a glass or a stainless steel bottle. It's more economical. Spend the money on your filter oh, yeah. instead. A absolutely. Right. Absolutely. I couldn't agree awesome. more. Great, great advice. How about, um, we were talking about reflexology before, and I definitely want to touch on that and the caretaker aspect of that also. Yeah, so reflexology is something I learned about in naturopathic school, and reflexology is a great modality and to know and to do and how it can work for us. So one way to kind of describe reflexology is you know it can certainly be a hand or a foot massage and it can be very relaxing and therapeutic and all of that is true <laughs> however reflexology really is an assessment tool and it's also energy work and so i do it on all my clients as much as possible and use it 
not only to kind of get an assessment of where they are health wise, but it also is a chance for me to kind of interact on an energy basis. And one of the things I was most excited about when I was in school learning about reflexology was I discovered that it has a wonderful connection to cancer therapy. And the National Institute of Health, believe it or not, gave a couple of million dollars to study reflexology wow. in the cancer community. And they contracted with a couple of, um, I think it was about five or six universities around the country and then a number of reflexology schools. And what was exciting for me to discover was that one of the reflexology schools that was contracted was here in Michigan. And they connected with Michigan State University. And the results of this long study that they did was twofold. And first and foremost, they discussed it improved mood. For many of them, it increased, um, decreased their pain response. It did all kinds of things for them, which is fabulous. But then the second part of the research study showcased that for caregivers who were trained to do reflexology on their loved one, it provided them benefit as well because they were suddenly empowered to be able to do something to help their loved one and give them some relief in their time of need. And so I just love that there's about two or three dozen studies on all that reflexology has done for cancer patients. And so I'm always out trying to trumpet the value of reflexology, of learning it, of doing it. And even if you don't you know, go to a <clears throat> school and learn how to do it, it's a very easy therapy to learn to do. And it's wonderful for a cancer patient. And so I think that every body who's touched by cancer, whether you have it, whether, whether you're a caregiver, reflexology would be a great tool to have in your toolbox to really be able to help someone and to help them move from point A to B and take away some of the stress that they're going through. Wow, that's really neat. I know, mm -hmm. you know as a caretaker myself for someone with cancer, it can be very energy sapping. Yes. Um, there's a lot of cortisol flowing. There's, there's a lot of stress and, and a, a kind of an emergency feeling. So that connection, I think, with the person you're caring for, it, it must be a really beautiful thing. Absolutely. And I would say even, you know, certainly as the caregiver giving, you know, a cancer patient reflexology, that's beautiful, but that would be something for a caregiver to receive as well, to go and find a local reflexologist and, you know, take that hour for yourself and get that, you know, vital energy work for yourself to help recharge your batteries and to help bring down that, you know, stress level on your own, because caregiving is just, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a de depleting activity. And the more that caregivers can do things to kind of support themselves, you know, why, why, why not go for it? And right. reflexology is a fabulous, wonderful tool. And in my studio here, I actually have a setup where I use a massage table and I start everyone with a foot soak in a fabulous little infrared pedicure kind of a thing. And so the feet are all warmed up and there's the massage jets and on and on. And then after I dry the feet off and I get them up on the table and I actually have a table that has an infrared mat on it. So it turns into a very beautiful one hour of relaxation and therapy, but people that come up off the table after a session you know, tell me they feel like a different person. And that makes me just feel so good because I, I know I've made a contribution to their health and well-being. It's great. And tell everybody with the infrared um, how that's helpful. So the infrared mat that I have, um, it also has the, uh, I think it's amethyst inside of it. And so basically, 
any of the energy works, whether it be, you know, through crystals or physical, whatever it is, goes into our body and it helps us move our circulation. And so the infrared mats a lot of times will penetrate six inches into the body. So along with the heat that's in most mats, and so my mat has a heat as well, has a heat aspect. So you're providing a little bit of heat to the body, we're moving the circulation, and we're improving just the flow of energy through the body. So as we know that when we have energy blocks or distortions, anything we can do to help break those distortions or move the blockages contribute to our well-being. And so sometimes just laying on the mat and getting that movement of the circulation and the energy flow just makes us feel better. Because as we know, things like emotions or toxins or whatever can create pits or blockages within us. And so the more we can remove those distortions and keep good energy flow, the better we feel. And when you're doing the reflexology, are there acupressure points? Is that what it is? And yeah, so different parts of the body. Yep. And so I do reflexology only on the feet. You can do reflexology on the hands, but I found over the years the feet speak better to me and work better. So um, what's kind of cool is the feet are an exact map to the body. And so there are parts of the feet when you're working on that are going to relate energetically or actually physically through the nervous system to the rest of the body. So for example, when I'm working on people's toes, the toes connect to the sinuses. And so I've had many people who came in and after I'm working on their toes, suddenly start thinking, oh, you know, my, I didn't know my sinuses were blocked or, you know, I didn't know I had anything going on. And so it's a real interesting connection. So the feet connect to the rest of the body. And so there's a number of different um, explanations or theories about how the feet connect to the body and so there's energetic theories there's um, theories saying that there's seven thousand nerve endings that come through the feet there's also tissue of embryology when we're born and so that's actually why reflexology works so well and connects to the rest of the body that it was the same formative tissue so it's interesting to see it play out in real life. But what I do know is people, for example, who have lung conditions, the top part of the feet right below the toes is the lung reflex. And so I know when I have clients who have lung issues, that part of their feet are gonna be a little bit tough and not quite move as easily as the rest of the foot. And so it's, in, it's been interesting for me, as I've worked with clients, for example, who have a lung issue, as their lung issues start to seize and start to change, the reflex pattern on their feet starts to ease up. Suddenly that part of the foot is easier and more pliable to move. It wow. really wow. is interesting. It's a, it's, a, it's a great modality. And then do you use essential oils also? Um, sometimes, sometimes, usually with essential oils, you know, everyone is so um, sensitive and has different sensitivities and likes different smells. So what I tend to do with reflexology is at the end of the session, I'll sometimes ask if people want a essential oil and I'll put a drop or two on the bottom of the foot just as a sort of ending sort of a thing. But I don't do it across the board. Um, I kind of will let people if they're familiar with an essential oil, I'll let them lead the way on if they want that or not. Well, that all sounds heavenly. Yeah. <laughs> I'm ready to do fly there and... <laughs> right, you, you are welcome anytime. <laughs> I, I just think, you know, getting in that relaxation state, you know, where you're in the parasympathetic um, and you forget all the fears looming uh, that are going on and allow yourself to really be in that deeper state of relaxation you could reach with someone caring for you and touching you and um, releasing things. I mean, that's just such a beautiful thing. And it's kind of a cumulative effect too, right? The more you keep doing it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And so it's a very, it's very, it's similar to Reiki or any other energy work where even though I'm, you know, specifically working on your physical feet, there there's an energy exchange, there's an energy work of me 
caring about the person I'm working with and I'm sending them good intention as I'm working and you know I'm asking for things to release and so it's definitely an energy exchange and it's a you know somewhat of an intimate connection it's it's right. it's our our energies are intermingling yeah that's really awesome wow yeah really thank nice. you any other things that you found um maybe that you want to talk about that you're finding is working or anything else you want to tell everybody um well i do want to mention um one of the things that's been exciting for me working with um you know cancer patients and just the whole understanding of cancer is i'm i'm excited that parameters and understandings of what to do with cancer patients is changing and being challenged and even something as simple you know i remember hearing 20 years ago that oh you know cancer patients should just rest they shouldn't exercise they shouldn't move or anything which we we, we know is ridiculous so when someone you know breaks a bone or does something we know that the more you move it is how you get it stimulated and you know back on the rebound and rebuilding and so one of the things i'm watching with interest is um one of the products that I sell, I'm real interested in fasting. And fasting has been one of my go-to things for my own health for years and years and years now. And so I'll fast different amounts of time throughout a year, every year. And I've been doing that quite some time. And so I was pretty excited to find um, Prolon, a company that does, it makes a product that mimics fasting and so you get to eat it's real food based but it's scientifically kind of formulated and set up so the body thinks you're fasting and so you kind of get the benefits of fasting but still get to eat because if you fasted boy is it hard to not eat <laughs> and so i love that you can kind of get the two in the same thing and it's real food but what i'm really interested in is prolon as a company is creating another five-day fasting mimicking plan specifically for cancer patients because they're able to kind of challenge that notion that you know um, you know cancer patients shouldn't fast and shouldn't do all these things and so you know if, yes of course everything has to be case by case and you know it can't just be every of, of course but I'm so interested that there's such good research and work with the whole protocol just for cancer patients because they're understanding that even when you're in a cancer state, some amount of stress to the body is what will actually help to start to recharge and rebuild and renew. And so I'm watching with bated breath to see when they actually get that setup done and so my understanding is it's um there are some other countries around that i think are testing it and using it and my understanding is the cancer diet is in clinical trials somewhere in the u.s right now so i'm watching with interest to see what's really going to come of that yeah that's really neat mm -hmm. it is interesting me, um at what point did you find b cancer what point in your journey was it after naturopathic school or? I found B cancer after I finished. And so, you know, when you're in school, there's so much swirling and you can't read or do much beyond beside what you have to do to, you know, pass the test and get through school. So I found B cancer after I finished and it was a wonderful find because, you know, as I mentioned, I'm a resource person. I'm always looking for things. I'm always reading. And so, after I finished, I found myself in this space of wanting to find, you know, like-minded people who would have a sort of naturopathic, quote unquote, view of working with people holistically, being supportive and not, you know, telling you what to do, but certainly giving you education and support for the decisions that they made. But I wanted to make sure there was also you know, an organization that, you know, had good amount of research behind it and, you know, had some quality names and 
you know, I just wanted to make sure it was something that was vetted. And so I was really tickled. Um, I can't remember exactly where I found it. I'm sure it was somewhere I was up at three in the morning researching or something. I'm not exactly sure. But I was really happy when I found it because from that, then I discovered that bee cancer is really connected to um, some wonderful other organizations because I hadn't heard of Healing Strong, which I thought was fabulous. And so I just really loved um, finding everything that Beat Cancer had set up. I loved the way the materials were sourced. I loved that, um, for example, there would be a comment on, you know, this type of a diet might help this type of a cancer, but then the actual study that it came from would be easily found and immediately listed. So I loved having everything so easy and collectible right there. And so as I've read through myself, gone through some of the bios of other people that are cancer coaches and watched some of these videos, I just find myself really humbled to be connected with some other people that are doing amazing things and really smart and really passionate and, you know, feel the same way I do, that we can, we have power as a group and we can do a lot. And really um, doubling down on our body and our energy and our support as a community, we can really make a lot of inroads. Absolutely. Thank you for that. Yeah, Susan, our founder, was really big on backing everything up with research. Yes. Um, and, and I found also the emotional correlate part of the course to be so interesting about, you know, what emotions are kind of, uh, what issues are correlated to which types of cancer. And after counseling people for 40 years, you start to see patterns like you were talking about breast right. cancer before. So kind of having that information gives you a starting point um, for conversation with somebody. So, yeah. Absolutely. You know. yeah. And I have, to, I have to say truthfully, just real quick, that probably my favorite part of the course, and I, I love so much of it, but Truthfully, I, I wish I could meet her in person, but my favorite part of the course was listening to Susan and just her stories and her way of kind of talking with people and her care and compassion. And I'm definitely a person who's drawn to people's stories and experiences. It speaks volumes for me. And I just think it says so much about a person that to have gone through, you know, what was certainly must have been devastating and a personal tragedy with her husband and everything, but to have turned it into this phoenix of an organization and just have turned tragedy into just total triumph. I just, there are just so few people who can just emerge like that and then have created such a big thing, bigger than yourself, and it will extend long after all of us are gone. And I, my favorite part, truthfully, was kind of just meeting her, so to speak, and watching her teach those classes and her ear, her knowledge. And I just think she's fabulous. I agree. You know, and the course was her legacy because yeah, when you have 40 years of counseling and knowledge and research, you want to pass that on. And I love that Bee Cancer is a gathering place for people that are so passionate. Many are survivors um, yeah. and, and just want to pass on what they've learned what's worked for them um, and people that have been compelled like yourself to want to get involved at this level and uh, make a difference and, and teach about the body. And it's, it's the connection to mind, body, spirit and our innate ability to heal um, because the body is powerful and it's our body and we're in control of it and we get to say what happens to it. And cancer can be a luxury to figure out, where we want to go next and with a cancer coach um we can do that you know we have the support and knowledge to do that so yeah thank you so much for that oh sure absolutely i just think this is great and i'm so excited to just be a part of the organization i'm looking forward to talking with some of the other coaches and sharing ideas and coaching is so much of what I already do in my, you know, with my own service, my naturopathic work and whatnot. So this dovetailed beautifully with what I'm already doing, but it sure does. 
Yeah, <laughs> it dovetailed well, perfectly, actually. <laughs> yeah, it, it's perfect. Yeah, because you had all the foundation, um, and and like you said, it's it's a bigger topic, um, cancer, and it's so wonderful that you were passionate about taking that on. You know, because we need people that care and that and that are you know, they're just passionate and driven to want to help on that level. It takes a special person. So thank you so much. And we want to know where to find you and what you're doing. Um, you have a lot of services that are so neat. Um, and thank you so much for sharing. But tell us how people can find you. The best way to find me, easiest way, is my website. And so my website is urbannaturopath.com. So Urban Naturopath is actually a lifestyle brand that I created. And so it's certainly all my services, but it's also a lifestyle where I'm encouraging everyone to take ancient ways of living and understanding, but make it relevant for today's time. So maybe you don't live on a farm, but it's very easy to put an urban garden back behind your house or to hang some plants in your apartment. And so it's just ways to kind of make ancient ways. And me is on my website. And on there, I have all my services that I list. The bulk of people that I work with are my concierge service people. And so that's actually a year long service. Um, where I work with people. We do a full set of functional diagnostic testing, and that's part of my FDN training. And then I do my whole naturopathic set of toolkit kind of things, and we do body work and nest scans. And we, I really spend a good year being a, a partner with them. And we really take a year to figure out how we can best build your terrain up. And so it's highly individualized. It's just exactly what one person needs to, you know, become their best self. And so I certainly don't shy away from anything emotional and I encourage it. And it fundamentally has to be a part of the healing. And um, that's the bulk of people that I see as far as what I do. But I do offer some one-time services, some food sensitivity consults and, you know, some body work kind of things by service. And so I list all that on my site. I'm also a pretty active uh, speaker. And so I have a speaker series. I'm a rock star at some of the local senior centers. <laughs> and so I do a lot of uh, classes there. I teach them all kinds of things about awesome. strategies for healthy aging and all kinds of things. And so they're really fun. Um, so I have all the usual social media, and so I'm listed by my brand, and so certainly you can find me on any of the social media, but the easiest way is to just go right to my website, and then you can vault from there to, you know, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, wherever it is that you might be. And probably the big place you'll find me is my Beacon event, which I'm really, really excited about. So I'm doing that um, Saturday, June 20th, and that's gonna be here in Southeast Michigan. And I'm, I thought of the event while I was actually doing my beat cancer study. Um, I was about halfway through and it just kind of settled in on me. I would love to do some kind of event for cancer, you know, survivors, thrivers, caregivers, whoever. And what I'm going to do is um, I'm calling the event Beacon, and I want it to be a beacon of light and hope for anybody touched by cancer to come and see all that the natural health world can offer cancer patients. So Saturday, June 20th, I'm assembling all the rock stars locally of the natural health world. And in that time frame, anybody who comes will be able to maybe do some yoga, do a little bit of gardening. We'll learn a little bit about food as medicine. Um, certainly maybe do some nest scans. Um, anything that we can, that I can do to kind of let people know that we have a lot of options out there for you and cancer does not have to be any kind of an ending point or a sentence there's hope there's modalities and there's people near you that 
are accessible and available for you to see. And so my Beacon event, I'm thinking, you know, it's going to start small, but I want to turn it into a big thing because I would love to see it go everywhere. And Beacon can certainly happen anywhere. There's people working in natural health modalities everywhere. Okay. It's just our challenge is letting people know we're kind of out there and letting it be known. And so this um, June 20th is going to be my first beacon in this area. So I'm super excited and I'm inviting some of my rock star friends from naturopathic school and some yoga teachers that I know. And it's just going to be a really good time. But I want everyone with cancer to come or who's connected to cancer to come and get something from this because that's exactly what it's for is education and support. Okay. We can get that information on your website. Yep, it's all there. So all of that's on my events page, on my site, and then all the registration stuff is all there. That's really exciting. Good for you. Great Thank job. you. Thank you so Thank you. much for all the education um, and, and for giving people hope and tools and just really, really neat uh, information and things they can do. So thank you. It was so great meeting you. And I hope people go to your website and come see you. I know I would sure like to. That, that <laughs> sounds like a relaxing, wonderful day. Uh, go get some services. So thank yeah. you for telling us all about that. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much for this opportunity. And I'm so thrilled to be a part of this and look for Beacon. Yes, thank you. Great meeting you. Nice meeting you too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.